All right, um, to get things off, um, which group would like to go first? Sure, I can talk about our project. Okay. Yeah. So we did a video together about how the world is actually getting better. Um, this project was based off of the book called Factfulness by Hans Rosling. Um, I read it for a different class and it really made an impact on me. It was about why we think things are going so much worse than they are, when if you look at the world in just numbers, things are better now than they ever have been before. So we actually took to the streets and we asked people what they thought, um, and we can show you a clip of that video now. We're out here on Church Street for our Dimensions of Self and Society class, asking people if they think the world is getting better or worse. And so far, we've had some surprising answers. <laughs> I think it's getting better and worse. I believe it's getting worse um, more in the way that it's getting better. But because it's getting worse, I think people are also becoming more aware, which is really cool. Um, like, especially politics. I don't know a lot about politics, but um, I know that people are like, definitely wanting to vote more and all of that so with every negative it's both right like you have like good things and bad things you have but it's always been like that isn't it like yin and yang yeah so i, I think it's actually same uh yeah over like the last 20 25 years uh, i feel like uh we've gradually been getting better but right now we're kind of at a turning point to where we can go either way um yeah, it kind of get the world better if they like like people doing the right things that they're supposed to do. We will, will be getting the right, but if there is any hit or raise, then the world's not gonna get better. Yeah, Roman, Roman's. It's getting better. It's a good place to stay and it's a safe place. I think it's getting better and hopefully burning can lead us somewhere. So we came out here with a few facts to tell you that it is getting better and things can be getting better and still be bad at the same time. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Good, good for Vermont. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I'm a visitor. So yeah, it's all foreign to me, but that's nice. And where are you from? Yeah, I'm, I'm coming from like Long Island. Yeah. Did you but, go to Long? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That. Does that make you think that things could be getting even better? Yeah, it it, it could be get more better for that. Yeah, for the, but I didn't look that much homeless. But yeah, it could be it could be get better. Do you think that that's going to continue to improve? Hey, you know, for, I, I think it's like you guys trying to do positive stuff. Like, if everyone just did that, like, it would be a much, you know, it's going to work out. <laughs> yeah. So what were your thoughts on our video? Honestly, I was somewhat surprised. There was a good variety. We got people from out of state, people from in state. Most people actually thought that we were somewhere somewhat getting better. We're kind of at this dividing point now. Some people think kind of negatively, some people think positively, but we got a lot of people saying that we're making steps forward, which was really cool to hear because people are kind of all over the spectrum right now. So that was, that was some good evidence for it. Yeah, just uh, seeing the video you guys did, uh, well, Dana and I obviously weren't a part of that, ma the making of that video, but I was really impressed by like how positive people were in general when you were asking them, is the world getting better? Like, I don't know, it was interesting to me, for sure. Yeah, it's kind of surprising. Most people think that like with the way it's going, it might be at a turning point, but it's we're making a lot of changes for the good, whether we know it or not. And even putting awareness to these things is a step forward from where we were when we weren't putting awareness to them. I think my favorite takeaway from the entire project was that 
things can be bad and also be getting better at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not just black and white, it's a spectrum yeah. and you're allowed to have both. Mm. Yeah. And I definitely think that news and reporters and stuff likes to highlight the bad things because that's what most people like to see. Yeah. It's more entertaining, I guess. Yeah, honestly, it was very like intelligently designed by just going out there and asking positive questions, <laughs> you know, and like getting people to look at things in a more positive lens rather than a negative news yeah, type. Definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, I might shift it over. We had a really similar topic, but I focused more on what we're dealing with our trash right now. And a lot of people, it's the world is kind of, it's sort of melting. <laughs> <laughs> Not physically, but the way we're acting towards it and the trash that we're putting out and the plastics that we're providing for people, it's the consumption for it. We've just had so much of it. So it's gotten so much easier to just grab trash bags, throw away lids, but we're not, we're not giving back. We're taking, we're taking, we're taking, and we're not giving back to a point where it's actually helping us. Um, but on a positive note, Burlington, Vermont is actually one of the first states or in-city states to pass the four plastic ban rule <laughs> in one bill. So we're banning all four plastics, styrofoam, um, plastic lids, straws, and plastic bags all in one bill, which is really impressive. Um, it's a movement forward. Some people see it as our contributions, they're so small, they don't make a difference, but it's really each contribution that makes a whole movement happen. It's all the little parts that make the whole. So that's what I found. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Nice. Did you wanna try to show your poster? Yeah, um, <laughs> I made a little poster. It's it's more of, um, I don't know, I got some things going on here. It's what we can do to actually help the situation and we're using bags, we're using lids. That's a really good step forward. This is kind of a little bloop. It's a little dramatic, but this is where we are headed, people. This is where we are headed. Um, yeah, it's the growing rate right now. Plastic is up 4% each year. It's just growing and growing and growing, and we're not doing anything to help that, so. But putting awareness to this is the important part. That's what I found. Yeah, the world is getting better. <laughs> it's getting better, yeah. <laughs> Small steps matter. The fact that we're having this conversation now is right. a step forward. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and how about you two? Did you guys want to yeah. talk about your video a little bit? Okay, sure. Um, so for our interview, we did we just went around and we asked people if they were weird um, because we were curious if people would be open about that, what they thought about it and things like that. And most everyone was very excited and happy to answer and had some weird responses, I guess. But I've collected from it all that weird is the new normal. That might just be a Vermont thing because Vermont's pretty sheltered and weird, but um, I think that's spreading around, which is really cool. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, no, it was a lot of fun, for sure. Um, we met a lot of really interesting people. They were willing to do a lot more on camera than we had expected. Like, we had people dancing. We had we met some lovely dogs. It was just, yeah. <laughs> it was very nice, a pleasurable experience, for sure. Did you find that going into the uh, talking process with these people, once you would ask the question, do you think you're weird? Do you think they opened up a little bit, even just being asked that question? It looks like it really took like half of the interview until they finally opened up a bit like <laughs> more often than not when we were going around asking people like are they weird like the first thing that people really like did was like take a step back like oh like, like oh. they you know, like the, a visceral reaction of like oh, you're asking me like what i do you know yeah. um, so that was funny but uh yeah overall like once you kept pestering them a little bit getting them to open up more um they became much more comfortable and more willing to share what they do Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and we'd also the final question we would ask is if they're open about it, which we realized was a really mm. dumb question to put at the end. <laughs> is because obviously they are. They just recorded themselves sharing about how weird they were. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was fun. Maybe that surprised them. Like, hmm, didn't realize I was actually that open. <laughs> yeah. Now I am. <laughs> Yeah, and if you're curious, our video is super cool. If you want to watch it now, go ahead. Here's yeah. A clip. Yeah. Here's a clip. <laughs>
Hey, how are you doing? Can I ask you some questions? What is normal? Like, what do you consider normal? I don't think that... I don't think there really is a normal, I guess. I think normal is what you want to have created around you and what makes you feel like you belong. Being myself, mm. that's what I would say. I mean, for everybody, it, depends, it varies, right? Yeah. I mean, for you, it might be something different. But me, if I, as long as I'm myself, I'm all right, I'm normal. That's a great I feel answer. normal, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, being yourself. Being that's yourself is a is a good normal. I don't think there. Uh, I don't think there should be any normative, um, unless you're hurting yourself or other people, and then maybe that should not be a, a normative value. But beyond that, um, I don't think we should try so hard to define what is normal because people come in all sorts of flavors, and <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree with you. <laughs> something regular, expected, maybe something that doesn't surprise me. Okay. Something that I can understand without having to strain myself too much. Okay. Good. Next question. Do you think you're normal? Uh, I hope not. No, I don't think. No, I've never tried to be. I don't think I could pass as normal <laughs> if I wanted to. And um, no, no, thank you. <laughs> normal is an average. And who is yeah. the average? And how many people are normal? It's not too many people are the average. So many. normal is abnormal. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Okay, it's hard to read. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I think everyone's normal, I guess, which goes against what I just said about normal being standard or, av or average. Um, yeah, I think that being human is normal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> by, by not worrying about what others are going to think about you um, by really fully committing to being yourself and showing people that not only can you enjoy a life where you are fully committed to being yourself and, and not trying to live a life that pleases others or out of obligation. Um, and also uh, by doing that, I think you demonstrate to other people who might be afraid to take those risks you can show them that other people really will love you even if you don't walk the same path mm. as everyone else or what you were told to do. That's wonderful. Okay. How are you weird? Sorry. <laughs> she wrote these questions. It's, ah. it's a struggle. That's <laughs> fine. That's fine. I like it too. Uh, not entirely. <laughs> I feel like there are things that are a little different about me, but I don't know. Uh, how are you weird? How am I weird? Um, I feel like I'm into a lot of weirder stuff. Like I like dark, <laughs> dark stuff and morbid stuff. And I don't know. If that's considered normal, but how are you weird? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Um. I guess I'm just thinking of the ways that I'm like not like not as average. Like I sleep a lot on weekends, like more so than the other folks. Like I won't wake up. I'm like that's not really weird, but that's like not yeah. as like standard as other folks. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Is that an okay example? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. How do you live an alternative lifestyle to others? Um, I think we're all in our little Vermont bubble, so everyone here lives an alternative lifestyle to others. Um. Yeah, I guess I um, really make an effort to know where my food comes from, and I have the privilege to do so. Um, and I know that a lot of folks just in the U.S. don't choose to, don't have the literacy or background knowledge to, and don't have the, like, access to do that. Um, so I would say that that's, that's kind of like, what was the question? Unusual lifestyle, or was yeah, it an al yeah, alternative, lifestyle? alternative lifestyle? I would say that that's, like, a little bit alternative lifestyle for me. Okay, yeah. awesome. And are you open about your alternative lifestyle or weirdness? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that, yes, definitely open about it and also open to hearing other people's lifestyle differences and differences to me. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I hope you have a wonderful day. Yeah. You oh, um, I dress <laughs> like a preschooler because I'm a preschool teacher and I don't make any apologies for it. <laughs> um, I sing 
to myself all the time and I'm in a band and even when I was you know almost well, our, 10 our months really pregnant our our band, really yeah we we rant we rave like <laughs> we do all sorts of music we don't even try to just do one um, I, I make all sorts of art I encourage my children to be subversive and to be themselves and uh, I like to let my freak flag fly and to encourage other people to do so mm -hmm. I have another follow-up question on that. Absolutely. I heard you say you were 10 months pregnant. Uh, well, yes. <laughs> I had three children who were overdue. One oh, wow. who was a planned cesarean, but three of my children were overdue by a month. Oh, wow. And even then, I would wear Lycra and get on stage and sing punk rock songs. So That's incredible. Oh, that one time you sat down. <laughs> I did sit down once. That is true. That's true. One time. I though. did. One time. How are you weird? Um... Oh, wow. Well, that's a great question. I wish I had a really great answer for that. I think there's a lot of things that I might do that's weird, but I think the thing that makes me weird is that I love to dance everywhere. Some people might think that's weird, but like our normals, like I think weird is normal. Awesome. Yeah. Um, how do you live an alternative lifestyle? Um, how do you define alternative? Can I Just ask that? Not the basic, you get, wake up, you go to work, you do So, everything. like, I'm not a white, straight male with two and a half kids? Is that what you mean? I guess so. I, I mean, you so, because that's, so I think that's the question is, what's the regular lifestyle? Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. a hard question to answer, because to some, alternative might be, oh, I'm gay. Alternative might be, I don't have kids. Alternative might be that I shaved my head once. You know, like... I don't know. Alternative might be that I have a tattoo. Um, what is that for you? I don't, so that's so hard because I don't <laughs> know what alternative is. Alternative is different than me, but I think alternative is great. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, cool. Are you open about your weirdness and alternative? 100%. I think it makes it, I think that helps others bring out their weirdness. Awesome. Yeah. Also, one more question. Of course. Do you mind if we get you dancing on camera? Oh my God, what kind of dancing on camera? Any I just got back from like a 12 hour trip. I mean, like, I don't know. I need some music. Pump it up. I I'll do whatever you want. Oh, sorry. I'm like pulling that mic. <laughs> I might have you know. music. Oh my word, you're like really gonna get me to dance on it? Maybe. If oh. I have music that's not too um, weird. Weird? Yeah. <laughs> not too something no, I you don't. I can, I dance to the music in my own head like constantly, all the time. I mean, depending on what it is, it's going to change it. You can do a little ballroom if you want, you know, yeah. like, this weird dancing. You know, I don't know, whatever it is. I am, I am very open yeah. about it, even in my workplace, which, and I work with children, and um, I'm very open about it because um, I just think it sets the stage for other people being open, and mm. then it uh, normalizes not being so normal, and, uh, yeah, I hope it encourages other people to just be themselves. You've encouraged me, so thank you very much. An alternative lifestyle. Yeah. All right, as far as like appearance-wise, I feel like I've kind of like modified myself outside of the norm. Like I've like stretched my ears, yeah. like I have tattoos, stuff like that. Like uh, I feel like that's not an everyday thing, so that would probably be as far as I go. I don't really like to live by one specific way. I like to mix it up. Um, and, well, actually, this is kind of obvious, but are you open about your alternative lifestyle and being weird? I think so. Okay. I think it's fun. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Oh, are we interviewing him now? <laughs> <laughs> Will you, would no, you like I to be interviewed? I thought I'd do more on that before I go. Oh, that's my last question. Hey, thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you, ladies. Nice to meet you. The important thing Annie. is make sure you're being normal. <laughs> okay, I'll try. <laughs> yeah, I'm Dana. Professor Williamson. Jamie. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Jamie, my best friend of many, many years. Thank you guys very much. Hey, have thank a you. good night. You too. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let me try to get in the frame here, kind of. All right, first question. Yes. What is normal to you? Is it recording? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was what we did. <laughs> uh -huh. Did you want to talk about your uh, personal project a little bit? 
Oh, sure. Um, so for my personal manifesto, um, okay, this camera, um, I tried to just depict in a painting, wait, this one, okay, this one, um, just p pretty much like love and compassion, and I tried to portray the emotion that like, it's dark, somebody's sad, I don't know, just give somebody a hug every now and then, just be nice, it's all about love, man can't hurt it mm -hmm. really can't hurt to be nice even in the smallest ways that yeah that kind of reminded me um we had a talk a couple weeks ago we were able to talk to Ali Dang he came into our class and he discussed with us where he had started his career in helping out in his community and where he ended it and where he was now and what steps he was taking and I can say what I took away was that even just starting so small you don't have to start big just start small acts like we're doing now. We're just sitting here talking to the community. It doesn't matter how big it is, because if that's what you're interested, if you actually have something you want to put forth, it'll start to grow and you'll be able to get more of a feel of what you want to do. It doesn't have to, you don't have to just jump all in. You can just get a feel for what you like. And yeah, you just grow from there. So that was really cool being able to talk to him because he's on the city council and he has a lot to say for just helping out and starting small and growing big. So. That was really cool. And did you want to talk about your personal project at all? I do not have it with me, no. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> okay, cool. Did you want to, though? <laughs> oh, mine's uh, pretty similar to our video. I ended up doing some focus on why media was so negative. Um, and I actually found out that media is as negative as it is because that's what people are consuming. Um, and I was able to delve a little bit deeper into the negativity bias, which is our more innate desire to consume negative media, which is something that I didn't really know about. And it seems like a lot of people don't. Um, there was an experiment done where people were asked what type of media they like to consume. And for the most part, they said, I like to consume positive media, I like good things. But when they were given an array of options, they always chose the more negative, the violent, the war, the disaster. Interesting, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I wanted, originally when I went in this paper, I wanted to blame someone. And I wanted to be like, why is media doing this to us? Why is Facebook doing this to us? Uh, and it's really, it's because it's what we want. Even if it's not what we think we want, it's still what we're innately looking for. Uh, and I actually found the solution to that is just understanding that we have that negativity bias in us. And that's the first step to overcoming it is now that you know that maybe that's part of you and maybe that's something next time you're looking at articles, you can go, hmm, maybe not this one. Yeah. And the less negative media consumed, the less that will be made. Uh, media is only being made to be consumed. Yeah. So if it's not what people want, they're not gonna make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting how we have that side of us that always goes towards that negative factor. It's like no matter what it is, it's like especially in news, it's like they portray it so negative. Even if it's not that negative, they're like, we'll grab their attention with this, but it's not all negative. And there's a lot more positivity coming from it. You always focus on the negative, but like, as you said, it's really important to shift your views and see how you really want to see it because there's multiple ways of viewing these things. I think another reason people like negative um, content like that is because they can compare it to their lives and be like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm thankful my life's not like that, which they probably don't think exactly like that. Yeah. But still, you know, people like to compare themselves to others and it makes them feel better if they're better than what's on the other side of that. Yeah, that's very true. It's interesting that like the negative media that you can consume can just be like countered if you're an active participant in the media you're consuming, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I, I know that like, a lot of Facebook and other social media platforms rely on algorithms that use like clickbait articles or how many times you click on certain things will determine what kind of stories you get in the future. So if you just avoid clicking on the bad articles, more often than not, your feed and the media you're consuming will become good. And that seems crazy, but yeah. I guess it's not, <laughs> which is so cool. Yeah, yeah it's amazing how much uh, is just based on awareness. Mm -hmm. Like once you're aware, you can move forward. And I think even with your project, that's the first tiny step is just being aware of what plastic's doing. Yeah or being aware that maybe you're kind of weird and that's yeah. okay and that's oh, there's other people out there that are like that too uh, yeah. and you can build from there. Yeah. Awareness is key. 
Definitely. Yeah, it sounds like that's across the board what we learned. Yeah. <laughs> Awareness matters. <laughs> and what you put your attention to, to be aware, that's what matters too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we have any closing comments? Anything else anyone wanted to say? I don't think so. I think I'm good. I think we hit our points. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been an awesome opportunity to talk to you guys, um, and it's been very cool for our class to be able to be here. So thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> okay. Wow, Zoo. You guys did so great. That was really awesome. Uh. And you shared the time and you